Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Uh, today we're going to be continuing our work on the space station. We're trying to get some life support modules up there. Unfortunately, uh, I have a lot of trouble launching these for whatever. I'm using one of the mod pack. Uh, I actually don't remember the name of the life support pack. But um, it's supposed to be... It's not just little canisters. It's like a whole section. Um, it's like a three meter section, I think. And for whatever reason, it's really top heavy. Um, every rocket design that I used with this had similar problems to this where uh, at, at a certain point the thrust was just no longer able to compensate for the top heaviness of the rocket. It kind of wants to just rotate around the heavy mass on the front there. Uh, it's, it's a pretty big problem actually. <laughs> um, I, this, this has been modified slightly. I actually strutted the boost. I, the boosters don't look strutted that well but I did add some more struts and Try to stabilize things a little bit more. I also think I turned down the thrust a little bit on the solid rocket boosters to try to get a longer burn time because everything kind of goes awry when they separate because the thrust goes down. And as you'll see here, they the parachutes made them crash, so that didn't really work. So again, we're, we're switching out the um, solid rocket boosters for some liquid fuel boosters. I was hoping the thrust vectoring on the engines would be able to compensate further for the awkwardness of this load um, but it just it, I don't know, it was a continual problem I don't know why I just separated that fairing but you can kind of get an idea this has like enough food for a couple like a year, a couple years worth of food um, I'm kind of using this as an experiment but you can see here we're just veering wildly off course uh, it's all the SAS and MechJeb and everything can do to try to keep it under control but now uh, MechJeb's gone and overcompensated of course and things go a little bit wacky so I turn off the engines and what the hell will separate everything so that's like three or four failures in a row I, I probably launched about ten different attempts to get this going uh, at this point I removed the fairing the fairing was useless I have a kind of hybrid of some really big solid rocket boosters the big liquid fuel boosters Basically, I adjusted my trajectory to just go as high as possible before we start the gravity turn because if I start turning, the thing just goes over. So um, we have some nice, long, relatively long-burning solid rocket boosters going here. I'm just trying to get as high as I can before everything flips out. Once we get into space, it shouldn't be so much of a problem. It seems to be something to do with the air. So we separate the boosters and just keep on trucking pretty much. And it looks like we're tipping a little bit. It's a little bit worrying, but it's more or less under control. So, uh, I, I actually ended up retiring these modules later because I don't really like how they look. They're just kind of parts taken from the stock game that are rearranged slightly. I don't, they look better than just having a bunch of random canisters strapped to something, but. I actually don't like how these look, so I ended up removing them later anyway, but uh, the main reason is just they're very difficult to launch. If you empty them out, they're not so bad. They weigh and oh, here we go. This, I kind of remember this now. Uh, they weigh a lot when they have food in them, and so I have the RCS on trying to compensate. Oh boy. Uh-oh. Not good. But, uh, yeah, uh, I ended up solving this problem in the future just by launching these things um, empty. Apparently the food is very, very heavy. So uh, fortunately you can tweak how much of everything there is in it. So I ended up launching them empty and just filling it up as we go. Yeah, this was not the successful launch still. This still was full of food, so it didn't work. Doing some nice somersaults and stuff. Uh, it actually did make it into space. It kind of recovered temporarily, but I ran into the problem of just not having enough fuel to really complete an orbit. That was actually some nice piloting by MechJeb. Uh, I didn't really touch it to get that back under control. I'm actually kind of impressed that MechJeb managed to do that. The autopilot's not usually that good at correcting emergency stuff like that, but it did that time. I like those Soyuz style boosters quite a lot. So, you can see that, uh, the RCS is pushing real hard trying to get this thing to nose down and uh, it's unfortunate because I'm using a lot of the RCS fuel that I really wanted to use for the docking when we get into space. That's one of the reasons this launch 
ended up being scrubbed as well. Because uh, I, I just don't know why these things are so unmanageable. And I, like I said, I kind of figured it out by just dumping the food contents, and that seemed to help. But it's just ridiculous. And does this thing break up, or does it? I think it, it kind of looks like we're through the worst of it now. But I definitely know for sure I ended up aborting this anyway. And yeah, at this point I realized we were going to be switching over to the was supposed to be the orbital man maneuvering stage and we still hadn't even achieved orbit. So it was not going to work. Now this is just pretty much a similar rocket. I added a couple rocket engines up at the top that I'm going to have to manually transfer fuel to. Uh, the thinking was if I could get thrust up higher uh, I had to do this with some fuel tanks previously too, um, in my, I think that was in my first series that I did for Kerbal, but um, the idea is to get the thrust up higher, it gives me a little bit better steering control because I have vectoring rockets up there right at the front, and if our point of balance is too far forward, the center of gravity, then this will help compensate. I think I also emptied out like half the food in this to try to um, alleviate some of the trouble. And uh, it went a lot better. It's not an ideal, and uh, like I said, I don't use this particular module anymore anyway because of the problems that I had. But uh, we'll just continue on into orbit. This one I think is going to make it. All right, so the thing's still kind of flipping out a little bit here on the way up. Um, just trying to get it under control. It's ridiculous, and uh, we're kind of going like sideways right now in a weird fashion sliding into orbit I guess uh, the main engines are gonna be well not the main engines but the booster engines are gonna be burning out unfortunately in a second here I'm just rearranging some of my my staging here and like I said once we actually clear the atmosphere it's not so bad but in atmosphere it is insane and things are kinda going haywire here again but we got our separation off and is it going to get under control? Maybe. Again, we're just kind of sliding. The RCS is having to work real hard to try to get this stupid thing under control. It's ridiculous. But I think we're kind of in the clear now. Um, the air is getting thinner. The flipping out should be less of a problem. I'm going to have to manually balance the fuel for a little bit here on the way up because... I don't want those engines using up all of my later stage fuel, so I'll have to keep transferring fuel forward and whatnot. But it's under control now, and I think we're good to go uh, here. All right, so we deactivated those engines. Right now, what I'm doing is just transferring the fuel out of the little fuel pods that I have on those, so we can actually ditch them. Um, we're we're high enough up now that it shouldn't be a problem anymore. Whoa, those things really went flying. So, uh, looks like we'll be separating this in a little bit, and I will meet you when we actually get the rendezvous going here. Alright, so we're revealing the payload. Uh, we're doing our orbital burn in a second here, and uh, we'll ditch this main stage and go on to the uh, orbital maneuvering stage here. Uh, everything here is just going to crash back down into Kerbin and not be a hazard to navigation in the future, which is always important to me. And there we go. Alright, so uh, once we get it up into space, it's easy to maneuver. The docking wasn't a problem at all. Just bringing her on in to uh, dock with the station here. And like, like you can see, it's really not bad. It's uh, very, very odd the way that that worked out, but... Uh, we ha now have some life su basic life support going, we have um, some crew quarters, and we're ready to actually bring crew up pretty soon, which will be cool. There's still a little bit of construction left to do, of course, we need some more modules and stuff, but um, uh, I'm now we can transfer fuel around too, so basically when I bring up anything on one of these ships, I'm going to be transferring fuel out to make sure we keep the fuel tanks topped off as much as possible. But uh, I'll just go ahead and undock this thing and deorbit, and we'll get on with the next launch. All right, so we're back down at the Kerbal Space Center, and uh, this is my initial version of my crew launch vehicle for shuttling people up to the station. Eventually, I'd kind of like to build an SSTO, but 
I've had nothing but problems designing and building those things. Uh, so that's a little further, more advanced stuff down the line. I am using a couple mods here. Um, it's the, I don't remember the name of it, um, but it's a, a system of modules for uh, service modules. I think it's a service module pack actually uh, for the Mark III cockpit or Mark III uh, capsule rather. So it has a little escape tower. It has um, uh, various little uh, components and stuff like a service module that has fuel and whatnot on it so that we can have a, a nicer looking little transfer vehicle than I think is really possible with the stock parts. And this is meant to be a, just a pretty much, you know, fairly efficient little ship. It's not very big. Theoretically, I guess it would be relatively cheap to build and fly. So whenever budgets actually matter, this will probably work all right. Like an SSTO would probably be better. But like I said, those have been nothing but a headache. And fortunately, compared to the vehicle we were using earlier, this thing works perfectly and we make it up into orbit. No problem at all. Uh, here we are separating stages here. Uh, you can kind of get an idea of, of what happens exactly. Uh, I, I, like I said, I really like how this system works and how it looks. So that thing, the escape tower just really goes flying off at ridiculous speed. We kind of clip through that shroud there. When I light the engine, something explodes, probably the decoupler. And uh, there we go. We got our little solar panels out. We got our little little maneuvering thing. It has a, a cool little parachute. I like the design of the parachute docking port on the front because one of the problems you always have with these is where to put the parachutes in. The docking port actually has an integrated parachute system which is much better than the stock parts. I really really like that. That's probably my favorite thing out of all of this. I actually um, think that needs to be in the main game. It's much better. And uh, now we're just coming up to bring the crew up to the space station for the first time. They're getting their first look at it in its, all of its majesty in the sun there. Uh, at this point, I had already brought up another solar panel. I didn't show that because it was pretty much just the same thing that I did before. But with the life support module in, you know, it's installed and those fuel tanks installed, I could bring up another solar panel module. So that's been installed already. So uh, the station's at full power. I have like, a water filter and an air filter down. Uh, in that central core where the the RCS tank is and uh, we should have plenty of uh, radiators to keep things nice and cool there's enough food I think for like for these three guys to live here for like three years or something ridiculous like that I forget what the number is but there's a lot of food so uh, just kind of coming in nice and slow and steady deactivate engines because I always like to do that and so I don't accidentally hit shift and crash into or something on the way in or whatever and uh, we tucked away the solar panel so they won't collide with anything. And uh, we're ready to get this crew transfer done. Alright, well that took a couple of minutes to get closed in with the station. But here we are on our final docking approach. Good opportunity for another screenshot or two, I guess. And uh, it's kind of fortunate that the sun is behind the station because... Uh, it lights things up still, but it's not blinding. I'm sure the pilot appreciates that if he were actually piloting this. The station seems to be blocking most of the light there. And uh, also this docking port has little headlights on it, which is pretty neat too, because it's a little hard to sometimes see docking uh, ports, and it's kind of cool that they put the light on the front of that. It definitely uh, is a sleek little package here. And it works just fine. Here we go, closing in. So this thing's going to remain on orbit as a lifeboat for them too if they did need to evacuate the station for any reason. Uh, we'll always have enough capacity to return everybody back down to Kerbin who's up here. I haven't really decided on a final crew. For some reason the RCS is like flipping out now so I'm just going to turn off the automatic pilot and <laughs> there it goes. Um, I haven't really decided what the permanent crew is going to end up being on the station yet but we'll figure that out in the future just kind of tuck that scan sat thing up out of the way and see our life support stats so they're fine I do need to run some resupply missions up here but I won't really deal with that stuff on camera just did a little time warp to stop the station rotating mysteriously and uh, we transfer people over here take command of the station and uh, the crew manifest thing is just infinitely useful I think it's another feature that really ought to just be in the game. 
these docking ports are big enough that people would be able to transfer. They don't do EVAs every time they move around, you know, between the space station and the, the capsules. So, it'd be kind of nice if that was part of the game, but it's not. But we are going to do one EVA here, just to do an inspection of the station, even though it's all crooked relative to the, the uh, equator. And so I'm just going to fly around the station a little bit, get a look at it. I do like doing EVAs. It's always kind of nice to get a sense of scale. You don't really get the sense of scale of things, um, I think, without taking a, a Kerbal out and flying around. And it's the sort of thing you would really do. You know, in real life, they do have to do spacewalks to assemble components and stuff. So it makes sense he'd be doing an inspection of some sort of the station. Since it is his home and, you know... Wants to make sure it's not all going to leak air. There's an airplane flying really low. I apologize for that right now. If you can hear that in the background. But, uh... Basically, there are a couple more components to the station that need to be launched. And I think we'll take care of that in the next future missions. But this is really going to open up the, the MUN and MINMIS to uh, transportation. The idea is that crews will come up to this station and then transfer to transfer vehicles that are just permanent, they're actual spaceships, like starships. They are not designed to re-enter the atmosphere or ever land. And um, they're just, I want to build a couple shuttles that are going to transport people back and forth between stations around the Mun and Minmus and Kerbin. And we'll have a nice little spacefaring civilization starting here. Uh, it's, you know, it's baby steps, but we're getting there. So... I want to thank you guys for watching this, and I believe when we come back, we'll probably start working on, uh, I think there's a couple more modules I'm going to be launching the space station, we'll probably get started on those uh, moon shuttles, I'm going to call them, so we can start transferring crew back and forth and whatnot, and actually get some exploration done in a more permanent uh, fashion. So, again, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.